and welcome back to Professor Choice's Corner. In today's episode, we'll be diving into chapter 11 of our intro to criminal justice course, which focuses on the overview of corrections. Corrections play a vital role in our society, and it's important to understand its history, different models, and the populations found within the correctional institutions today. So let's get started. In order to understand the role of corrections, we first need to define what it means. Corrections refers to the various methods and strategies used to respond to criminal behavior and re rehabilitate offenders. It aims to protect society, punish offenders, and help reintegrate those persons back into society. Moving on, we explore the precursors to the U.S. prison system. We'll examine the evolution from early forms of confinement such as hawks and jails in colonial America to the establishment of modern prisons. Understanding the historical context helps us appreciate how corrections have evolved over time. Next, we contrast the features of the Pennsylvania system with those of the Auburn system. Uh, the Pennsylvania system emphasizes or emphasized solitary confinement and the reflection uh, and stark reflection, while the Auburn system focused on congregating uh, and being silent. Interestingly enough, we're going to be looking at both of those systems. See how they intersect. Now let's dive into the features of reformatories and prisons uh, and therapeutic prisons. These institutions aim to provide rehabilitation and treatment to offenders, focusing on their personal growth and addressing the underlying causes of their criminal behavior. Industrial prisons. Industrial prisons, another important aspect of corrections, are designed to utilize and make labor for economic purposes. We will explore the defining features and evaluate their effectiveness in the terms of rehabilitation and reducing recidivism. So I'm losing my breath here. No. Moving forward, we discuss the four major models of corrections, the retribution model, the deterrence model, the rehabilitation model, and the restorative justice model. Each model has its own approach to addressing crime and offenders and will be examining their strengths and limitations. Shifting our focus, we analyze the populations found in correctional institutions today. This includes understanding the demographics, trends, and in inmate population numbers and the challenges faced by correctional facilities in managing diverse groups of offenders. Furthermore, we explore the types of victim services found within the correction system. It's essential to understand how victims are involved in the correctional process and the support services available to them. And last but not least, we examine the extent and nature of privatization of prisons. Uh, privatization has been a topic of debate and we'll delve into its implications, advantages, and disadvantages. And uh, that completes our overview on chapter 11, corrections. Okay, we've covered a wide range of topics from the historical development of prisons to the different models of corrections and the challenges faced by the correctional system today. Remember, understanding the complexities of corrections is crucial in shaping our approach to criminal justice. Thank you for joining me today. And believe me, I'll see you in the next episode of Professor Choice's Corner. And I can't, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the guy who was our guest speaker, Lieutenant, retired DPD Lieutenant Armando Perez. I think Lieutenant Perez told you, he's old school. Been there, done that, seen it all.
I can safely say that everybody had a great time with your presentation.